With only one feature in, we know exactly what we're in store for from Hereditary director Ari Aster. And while his sophomore effort still maintains that sleepless night inducing terror, Midsummer is ultimately a film about relationships. And as a result, this is one of the most relatable films I've seen in quite some time. Stick around and find out why. What is up everyone and welcome to Men Vs Movies, I'm Griffin as always and if this is your first time checking out one of our videos, consider hitting that subscribe button where we take on the best and worst of cinema on a weekly basis. Midsummer is directed by Ari Aster and it stars Florence Pugh, Jack Rayner, Will Poulter, William Jackson Harper, and Wilhelm Blomgren. Aster's follow up to Hereditary follows a young couple, Christian and Danny, in a troubled relationship as they travel to a Swedish Midsummer Festival with their friends that slowly reveals itself to be this horrific fantasy. One thing became clear after watching Hereditary, and it's that Ari Aster is a filmmaker who's going to speak his truth no matter what. He's going to openly throw himself out there and tell the story that he personally can tell. And so it should come as no surprise that Midsummer also draws from Aster's own personal relationships. The director stated that this was a film he wrote after a bad breakup and my god does it show. At its core, this is a film about a couple who has grown apart through extraneous circumstances and it all eventually comes to this operatic crescendo. Christian and Danny are two of the most relatable characters put to film all year because we've all been either one or the other at one point in time in any relationship we may have been in. Christian is a guy who's just lost investment into the relationship and he's no longer able to be the person that Danny needs at that moment, yet he's afraid of getting out because of the consequences that may occur. Danny, on the other hand, knows the relationship is broken but stays anyway because of her codependency and that codependency is strengthened after this horrific tragedy happens to her at the beginning of the film. And so throughout the course of this methodical two hour and 20 minute film, you see the inevitable conflict come to a head with such extravagance. And one of the reasons this relationship is so effective is because of incredible performances from Jack Rayner and especially Florence Pugh. Rayner approaches the character with a lens of empathy and in so doing makes Christian a far more rounded and real person than just a straight up asshole that he very could have easily been played as. You can understand the struggle he's going through and his inability to be the person that Danny needs, but ultimately his actions speak for himself and so we get into some troubling territory. Florence Pugh, on the other hand, is absolutely spectacular and what is her best performance to date. If you thought Tony Collette should have won the Oscar for Hereditary, I can tell you that you're going to feel similarly about Pew as she gives such an incredibly real and relatable performance. Completely raw, stripped down, emotionally pushed to her limits, Pew is forced to go to such an emotionally dark place as she puts forth a deeply conflicted character in desperate need of support. Wisely, Aster shows us that the effects of this kind of relationship can spiral into other relationships as rifts and conflicts form between Christian and his friends. And from Danny's perspective, we get an interesting commentary on grief, trauma, and over-dependency on the wrong people in such a time of need that ultimately inhibit us from confronting the situation head on. And if you can even remotely relate to any of that, by the end of Midsummer, you're going to be saying, wow. I felt that. But the question is, how does Aster's grotesque pagan nightmare work to frame such a seemingly non-terrifying story? The answer? Extremes. Aster gradually pushes these characters through the unsettling circumstances folk horror provides, forcing them to confront these problems head on. For while the villagers certainly have a hidden agenda, they aren't inherently wicked, and it's the viewpoints and decisions these characters make that ultimately determine Determine their fate. And so once again, Aster makes an interesting commentary on our perception of unfamiliar or antiquated traditions. And it's through this thread that we're 
treated to Midsummer's biggest surprise, comedy. Weirdly enough, this film is effective as a dark comedy, carrying over some of the camp found in many of Astor's short films. Will Poulter elicits many of the laughs through his stereotypical dickish traveling American persona, but it's Astor himself who's responsible in large part for the film's humor. From a world building perspective, Astor and cinematographer Pavel Pajelski draw from The Wizard of Oz to shape such a vibrant, pastel colored world that beautifully provides a false sense of security in the filmmaker's own twisted version of Oz. Hell, even some of the film's most dreadfully bloody and disturbing imagery is painted in a way that makes it look gorgeous. And let me tell you, that imagery is in abundance. Astor has this ability to linger just ever so slightly on the most fucked up frames, forcing the image forever into your subconscious. And we saw a little bit of that in Hereditary, but in Midsummer, it's only amplified twofold. And as we learned from Hereditary, make sure you pay attention to the background as it's littered in information that will help contextualize the story, enriching your experience to the fullest. Before we give you my final verdict on Midsummer, guys, why don't you take a second here and like this video, share with your friends, and subscribe to this channel for more movie reviews and movie-related content on a weekly basis. Well, Astro's sophomore effort certainly takes its time, and to some may feel a tad self-indulgent, there's no denying the magnetic pull that it eventually has as it catapults you into this bright, vibrant, viciously bloody and gory new world. As Astor himself described it, it's a twisted adult fairy tale and I couldn't agree more. While not overtly scary, the film does have its fair share of disturbing images and unsettling scenarios. But what's so beautiful about Midsummer isn't the framework in which this story is told, it's how personal and relatable the core of this narrative is. It's a breakup story in the general sense and you have to respect and admire the willingness for Astor to openly pour himself into this work and it shows. And so for all of these reasons and the reasons I've mentioned throughout my review, I'm ultimately going to be giving Midsummer Armored Up. And now I wanna hear from you all. I wanna know what your favorite cult or folk horror film is down in the comments section below. And if you've seen Midsummer, be sure to let me know your thoughts and opinions on that as well. As always, you can like Men Vs. Movies on Facebook, false on Twitter, simply by searching Men Vs. Movies. And lastly, if you like me specifically and you like what I have to say, you can give me a follow on Twitter, at Griff Schiller. All right, that's gonna do it for this review, guys. And until next time, take care.